Hi everyone, today I want to show you how to use Crew AI with MCP servers, namely Neo4j's Cypher MCP server, and then wrap the whole thing in Fast API so that you can run it locally or remotely. If you're not already aware, Crew AI is a platform for running multi-agentic systems. Neo4j is a graph database, and the MCP Cypher server allows you to interface with the underlying graph database. It only has three tools, just read, write, and then pull the schema. And then, of course, we have Fast API, which is a framework for creating API servers uh, written in Python. And jumping into code, today I'm going to use Poetry as my virtual environment manager uh, because the cloud service that I want to put this on doesn't yet support UV, but it does support Poetry. So if you're starting from scratch, what you want to do is do Poetry init. Uh, but in this demo project, I've already done this. So if you were to pull this sample code down, just do Poetry install and that will load up all the dependencies that are already in the pyproject.toml file. But if you're starting from scratch, if you wanted to get started, you do poetry add crew AI, and then crew AI tools, MCP, and that will get you started to where we are here. So here I've got commented code. This is for using Olama. So Crew AI can be used with Olama. Uh, I've just found, though, uh, in the end, doing a number of tests with different models, I just didn't get uh, a results that were as good as using OpenAI. So here we have the import statements that you'll need to run this. Uh, crew AI importing agent, task, and crew. And then the Crew AI tool called MCP Server Adapter. Now, this adapter is a context manager, and this will take care of starting and stopping the MCP servers, and will pass the tools onto the agents, task, and crew. Now, the server adapter takes one argument, server params, and the server params is just a list of dictionary objects, but if you're using a standard in-out MCP server, then you'll need to instantiate uh, an instance of the standard in-out server parameter. So in this function, there are three arguments, the command, args, and environment. And here, I'm using a UVX command to pull down uh, the Cypher MCP server. And here for the environment, I'm cheating a little bit instead of independently putting in the Neo4j credentials for URI username and password. I'm just passing in the entire environment variable. And I have a sample right here. So it'll pass the credentials in, um, and it'll just ignore the OpenAI key. Now, if you have an SSE or a streaming HTTP uh, MCP server, what you can do is just add in uh, dictionary objects with the keys URL and transport. So the URL is just the address of your MCP server, and then whether it's an SSE MCP server or a, or in this case, streamable dash HTTP to define an HTTP streamable MCP server. Okay, but today I'm not using uh, either of those, so I'm just using the standard in out server. Okay, and then this list is passed again into the MCP server adapter. Here I've just got a print statement that just tells me all the available tools from all the MCP servers uh, connected. And then the first thing I want to do is create an agent. Now, Crew AI recommends that you actually create the agents and task in a YAML file. Uh, here I'm just doing it directly in code just because it's kind of easier to follow. Uh, but be aware that the prescribed method is to put it separately into a YAML file. Okay, and then we're going to instantiate the agent. Uh, the required arguments is role, goal, backstory. So the role, goal, and backstory is just to kind of give um, more details on what this agent is, is and what its goal is to do. It's a local data processor, and it's for processing local standard in-out uh, data from the Cypher tool, and backstory is it's just using AI to leverage uh, local scripts uh, via MCP for a specialized task. So the tools arg is where you assign the tools coming in from the MPC server adapter, and here are some options if you wanted to see more console logs, you could switch this to true, and then also an option, uh, the step callback, so you can assign a function to run whenever an agent is finished a kind of a milestone mark in its reasoning. Now, this was the uh, this is the only way to show what Cypher commands the agent is deciding to use um, when it's retrieving data from a Neo4j database. So what I've done is I've assigned a function that just uh, prints out what had been done. And that way I can see, again, what the Cypher statement was used. And Cypher is the query language for uh, running against graph databases. And then here, this is where you would assign an LLM to an agent. So if you're using Olama, you would 
assign LLM to uh, the LLM argument. All right, the next thing we're doing is we're instantiating a task. And for task, you're, you need to pass in a description, expected output, and the agent that should execute the task. So here for the description, I have uh, processed the following query about the Neo4j graph database. And then I have a placeholder for input data. So anytime you have uh, opening and closing curly brackets, uh, that information, that's a variable, right? That will be replaced by an input dictionary that uh, we'll show in a little bit here. And then expected output, uh, just, you know, a comprehensive answer to the query. And then here I added a log callback uh, just to see what the tasks we're outputting, but this isn't uh, necessary. And the cipher query is never displayed in the task. It will only appear in the agent, um, callback. Lastly, we are instantiating the crew with the agent and the task that we created and, uh, the left of verbosity set to false. And then finally, we're taking that crew and we're running the kickoff function. The kickoff function is what will execute the, uh, the whole agentic process. And here, this is where you pass in inputs. And here I've just got the query from the top level function and passing it in as a dictionary. This is what the task will use to dynamically decide what it should be answering. And then here I've just got a uh, main guard so that we can run this as a script. And the question I'm going to ask this database is which staff member manages the delivery service delivering the most orders, uh, which will make sense actually, if I show you the underlying database. So here is the Neo4j database that is connected and this is the graph data model. So we can see here, this is a relatively simple supply chain use case where we have products that are supplied by particular vendors and orders made by people that work for some company orders reference that the number of products of a, of a particular product that were purchased and then also which vendors had uh, which delivery service had delivered it. So coming back to the query, this probably makes more sense now. So which staff member manages the delivery service delivering the most orders. So what I'm looking for here is who is the person that, um, uh, manages the delivery service, right? That handles the most number of orders uh, in the system. Now this is, again, this is just the graph data model. The actual data looks like this. And if I wanted to parse out, just say the orders data. So if I wanted just the orders data, just do match O order and return to me all the orders. And I can list this as a table instead. So here we've got when it was ordered, when it was delivered, and that's it for the nodes. The actual information or related to the order is actually in the products. So. Here we got contains which products product here. I can return all the orders, the contains data and the product data. And here I've got the order I've got, it contains this particular product and the count of that product. So this is uh, one way of storing data as a graph. Okay. So this question then probably makes more sense now, which staff member manages the delivery service, which is a company delivering the most orders. Okay. To run this, just going to do poetry run Python. And I call this uh, file just CAI. Uh, originally I put in crew AI, but that can conflict with uh, crew AI's own naming scheme. So just went safe. Okay, so here I made a call first to the schema. And so this is the schema of the database uh, in JSON format. Okay, we can see here that uh, whenever, again, whenever an agent has completed uh, one step, it prints out. And here is the cipher statement that it decided to run. And then taking that data, it then decided that the staff member who manages the delivery service doing most is Tomoko Sato. And we can actually verify that by grabbing this entire cipher statement. And it's right up to here. I can run this and it should be Tomoko Sato. Yes. Which I know from testing earlier. So very good. Okay, next we're going to wrap the whole thing into a fast API server, which is uh, going to be fairly trivial at this point. So what I'm 
going to do is just just call this run crew query in a fast API server, right? So here we have fast, fast API. If you want to edit the dependencies for that would just be fast API, UV corn would be needed and you could optionally put in Pydantic. Okay, so I have these already added. Now to create a fast API server, uh, here's the import statements. And here I'm also importing that run crew query function from the file that we created earlier. Here, just uh, creating a class. So this is for defining the JSON payload that this post endpoint will require. So it just needs to have a dictionary with one key query and a value. And then what it will do is it will take that query value and just pass it into that function that we had before. Okay, so to test this out, we can just run. So if you look in the readme, you can find the command for running this, which will be just poetry run, UV corn main app, and reload port 4000. The port is optional, of course, as is the reload. All right, so this uh, server is running on port 4000, so if I just click and open this up, the root path doesn't have anything, but if you go in here and you add in docs, you can get fast APIs interactive docs, so you can test out this endpoint directly. So I'm just gonna replace this query with a, who are all the vendors that supply um, for the products? Okay, scroll down here. The vendors in the database are Nanotech Circuits, Crystal View, yada, yada, yada. So we can see here we've got uh, list here eight vendors. And again, that's something I can double check in the database just by doing match the vendor and return the count of all the vendors. And I've got eight. Okay, great. And that is how you can add MCP servers into your existing crew AI setups. And then optionally wrapping it in a fast API server so you can host it locally or remotely. I hope that was useful for you. Happy coding. My name is Jason Koo, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.